Hello and welcome to iBuzz. I'm your host, Nasheen Bukhari, bringing you the latest and most exciting news from entertainment world. In today's episode, we will discuss Bill Cosby, followed by a review on the movie Aquaman. First things first, let me take you to the top stories of the day. The Kid Laroi and Justin Bieber to drop Stay next week. Lil Nas X announces debut album with Marvel movie-inspired trailer. The Flash, Jesse L. Martin, Daniel Panabaker and Candice Patton Inc. deals to return for season 8. Bill Cosby walks free after court overturns assault conviction. Castlevania Animation Studio Powerhouse Inc.'s first look deal with Netflix. And now moving to the top story of the day. Bill Cosby was freed from prison and returned home on Wednesday less than two hours after Pennsylvania's highest court overturned his assault conviction saying he never should have faced charges after striking a non-prosecution deal with a previous district attorney more than 15 years ago. To have further discussion on the subject, we have Emmanuel Sarpong with us, who is a TV presenter. Emmanuel, welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome again, and thank you. Thank you to everybody watching us right now. Emmanuel, uh, Cosby's case has been of longest, one of those longest ones which remained very unpredictable and now suddenly when he finally got released, which against raises a lot of questions that why did he have to face the charges at the first place? What is your take on that? Well, I think it's a bargain that went wrong and, mm -hmm. you know, with all these um, victims coming out to accuse him of, of, of mm -hmm. such a delicate matter like rape, Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think the, the, the prosecutor just wanted to send a message home that, you know what, uh, mm -hmm. why don't you go into this agreement and then let's, let's see if, you know, your confession would, would help silence mm -hmm. the matter. I think, I think this bargain or this deal was just to silence the matter mm -hmm. and then, you know, let people move on and let people believe like that indeed when you commit a crime like that, it is, it is an offense and mm -hmm. you, you, you get the we face the full rigors of the law. We've seen that with the likes of R. Kelly. Mm, um, yes. But many people are shocked by this background information mm -hmm. that if indeed there was an agreement of this nature, True. then why are we having this conversation in the first place? Because rape is a very mm. serious, serious allegation. And you need to have enough evidence to mm -hmm. put someone in jail. But exactly. for Cosby and the prosecutor to have that kind of agreement for me it was new mm -hmm. to me so i actually called all my friends in, in law to find out is this really possible like do you mm -hmm. have to coerce someone to confess something they didn't do just mm -hmm. to silence you know the reports and put it to bed but this mm -hmm. new development makes it even more bizarre and people are not going mm -hmm. to ask a whole lot of questions and this is not ending anytime soon mm -hmm. and when we talk about these yeah. sort of allegations it's all very hard to find out the truth Lots of opinions are formed in favor of one party against the other one, but when the stories unfold at the end, things take a 180 degree turn. Do you think it is because of mishandling of the cases mostly? Well, yes, of course. I mean, like I said, um, cases of rape is mm -hmm. not a case you should play with, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, because these, these are these are people who whose lives may never be the same you mm -hmm. know depending on how they experience it whether it was it was a deep experience or a light experience rape mm -hmm. is rape and it be handled with the needed you know detail the needed precision the the, the all the necessary need to greet it that needs to 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 be applied to to serve mm -hmm. justice you know so um first of all you're looking at a monumental mm -hmm. figure like bill cosby yeah. This is someone who um, was in the show, represented the Huxtables, that um, the American dream of a black family was mm -hmm. illustrated in. Everybody respected this man as though he was the father of, of many black homes. Mm -hmm. The show is over or the show stops airing. And the next thing you know, stories of these accusations are coming out mm -hmm. at this time. Do you get what I'm saying? So if mm -hmm. such 
allegations are leveled, mm -hmm. whoever is responsible for making sure that truth is first of all made clear, mm -hmm. justice is served, should do the necessary thing, you mm -hmm. know, because you are not just going to speak on behalf of the mm -hmm. um, of, of the victims, you are also going to have to deal with the accused. And mm -hmm. if these parties are not dealt with properly, uh, pro properly, mm -hmm. you send the wrong message to anybody who has been through, whether being um, accused falsely or whether right. being a victim. Right. Yes. Uh, and just the way I mentioned it earlier, that this case taken a 180 degrees turn. So does the, the current ruling mean that Mr. Cosby did not commit a crime against Ms. Uh, Constant? Well, um, from from what from what we read so far, it is it it, it seems as though he did not commit a crime. Mm -hmm. Now, if you heard um, Cosby's um, comments after he got released on the, on a radio station, mm -hmm. he said that this is for this is not just for him. It's not just for race. It's not just for mm -hmm. it's not just for um, um, uh, what do you call it. It's not just about being black. But yeah. it's for everybody or anybody who has been accused falsely. Mm -hmm. That to me suggests that perhaps indeed he did not commit the crime. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, 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 for me, it must it must the whole story because the lady in question is still shocked by the whole mm -hmm. development. You know, and let's also remember that she is not the only one that came out to say that she got raped by by, by Cosby or sexually abused by Cosby. They were. Mm -hmm. A dozens of other ladies who came to say the same thing. Mm -hmm. I am thinking about what these other ladies are going through right now. You know, who is going to mm -hmm. believe their truth? Or other people who are outside this whole incident or whole, this whole event thinking, okay, would I ever mm -hmm. get justice if I come out to speak the truth? And that is what this case is teaching us right now. Because if indeed Cosby did not commit a crime, mm -hmm. it stands to reason that there are other people who are, who are in jail, which is what he said, that he met other people who are in jail who said to him or shared their stories with him that look right. i did not do this but i'm here correct correct you get what i'm saying so it's it's a double edged sword here and uh, we need to take our time to look mm -hmm. at it critically correct uh, emmanuel the seventh justice disagreed with the majority so does that mean might mr cosby face a new trial well it's it, it is still ongoing it is mm -hmm. it's still ongoing um all the reports that have come out as a result of this release um, has not suggested what the mm -hmm. details of the next, you know, uh, the next stage will be. So, um, all I can say for now, because I'm not a legal expert, and mm -hmm. so I can't really say this is what it should be, but we just have to monitor the news, monitor mm -hmm. what's going on, and see what happens next. According right. to the Supreme Court of the Pennsylvania State, mm -hmm. uh, Pennsylvania State, um, he's a free man. Legally, mm -hmm. he's a free man because he went in agreement with somebody mm -hmm. hoping that not hoping actually the agreement was that if you do make this confession you will not be charged right you know so what about went wrong unfortunately has put the story into a very dirty light and hopefully mm -hmm. we can recover fully from it right and emmanuel some people are taking the consequences to a very next level you can say they're predicting the consequences to a next level uh in their opinion this is going to this ruling is going to affect other me too move, movement cases as well so what is your take yes. on that um to be honest um i i can side with them to a point mm -hmm. and it's very important that we like i said we look at this very holistically because um uh, this does not negate the fact that there are some people who have been charged falsely. There are some mm -hmm. people who have uh, are, or are, are victims of false allegations and they are spending life in jail. Mm -hmm. We also have people who have been raped, indeed raped or indeed sexually abused, mm -hmm. and they, they've had their way. You know, nobody seems to to believe them. Nobody seems to to know their truth, and as a result, they are they are. Um, their oppressors, quote unquote, their oppressors are walking about freely. So um, I think this opens the book of education. We need to go back to to what really needs to be done. It's issues like rape needs to have strong evidence. Everything needs to point to the fact that indeed this person sexually abused me. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't just jump the gun and charge people and put them in jail and ruin their lives. And later, mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. come out to say okay you know what yes because we've seen cases like that mm -hmm. we've seen a lot of cases where people were charged falsely they went to spend years in jail and then exactly. there was a new development they came back like oh you mm -hmm. know what we are. but that's like 30 years 50 years of their mm -hmm. life gone 
Exactly. No matter the compensation, it is never mm -hmm. going to take those 30 years back or bring those 30 years back. You get me? But right. um, it also doesn't, doesn't negate the, the victim, the plight of the victims. Mm -hmm. And we need to just try as much as possible mm -hmm. to, and stop this bias as human beings. Because, you know, if a woman says a man rapes me, mm -hmm. globally, most of the time, without most of the time without any evidence it is believed mm -hmm. because she is a weaker vessel right, right? so the, the the human nature which is a natural instinct mm -hmm. leads to that development where we immediately want to take mm -hmm. the full rigors of the law to 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 get these people into jail right. but we need to move right. away from emotions and do the necessary investigations Correct. apply legal legal counsel mm -hmm. and then get the truth out Correct. And Emmanuel, in yes. your opinion, such movements, I mean, uh, the, the examples like uh, Bill Cosby, uh, Harvey Weinstein, and then recent example is James Franco, who was fined $2.2 mil uh, million dollars, um, for the misconduct. So do you think that these sorts of moves and actions can bring betterment to the entertainment industry and make a more conducive environment for people who are working there? I think, I think it's a rash step. I think it's it's a good start. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're dealing with the characters of persons, mm -hmm. uh, because it's been a consistent character, mm -hmm. it becomes a habit. Right. So it will take a while for them to be to be completely mm -hmm. reformed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But these things that we put in place are incredible, incredible basis or starts to mm -hmm. to 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 bring about complete reform. Another example, um, one of Chipping is Kevin Spacey. You know, when yes. you know he went went through what he went through and then, you mm -hmm. know, he later came out. You know, one of the funny mm -hmm. things about that story is when he came out, he came to he was actually casted in a movie retelling the story that he was actually mm -hmm. involved in, you know, where the victim found it very, very bizarre. Right. Do you get me? When these people come back into the society, we don't need to empower them immediately. Mm -hmm. That is where the problem is. Because then right. it makes it look like they were right Absolutely. all along. And I, and, I, and I want to believe that's the same with Bill Cosby, that mm -hmm. people should not immediately see him as the savior. You mm -hmm. know, whatever needs to be done, the background checks needs to be done properly mm -hmm. so that the truth is brought into light. Right. You know, imagine having to wake up one morning and hear news that R. Kelly mm -hmm. is out because somebody did not, you know, the evidence was not correct. It would, it would mm -hmm. put the whole world into complete disarray that, what really is the truth? How yeah. do we apply the truth and how do we justify the truth? Exactly. So some of these things that are being implemented are great starts just to send a warning, you mm -hmm. know, just to send a warning that, look, don't think that because you command a particular influence in the entertainment industry, you can get away with it. No. Right. No right. matter how long it takes. Mm -hmm. Look, at, this case was way back in 2004. Mm -hmm. 2004, right. Cosby's, Cosby's case, was in 2004 we're in mm -hmm. 2021 he got mm -hmm. he got convicted in 2018 2004 so 14 years down the line mm -hmm. before he got convicted so yes. where to the entertainment mm -hmm. personalities music film mm -hmm. whatsoever don't think you are too powerful exactly. and you get away with whatever exactly. you do behind the scenes because exactly. when the time comes so so it's, have to it's a new that. beginning exactly. it's a new beginning to a better future for people working in the entertainment industry. Right. Emmanuel, thank you very much indeed. It was great discussing with you. Thank you so much, Eugene. Thank, thank you. you so much. That was Emmanuel Sarpong with his views on Bill Cosby getting released. And now moving to other story details of the day. On 9th July, Kid Laroi and Justin Bieber will release their new song, Stay. The 17-year-old Australian rapper and the pop megastar have been teasing fans on social media about the release and have now confirmed the date for their next tune together. The pals previously teamed up on the track Unstable on Justin's most recent LP, Justice. Justin said of the album that in a time when there is so much wrong with this broken planet, we all crave healing and justice for humanity. In creating this album, Justin's goal is to make music that will comfort, make songs that people can relate to and connect to so they feel less alone. Lil Nas X announced his debut album Montero with a trailer inspired by the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In the quick edit style of the opening credits of Marvel movies, Iron Man and The Avengers, the rapper included clips from his music videos in an online teaser 
for the Montero Cinematic Universe. Lil Nas X also included snippets from hit videos for Panini, Holiday, and Montero, Call Me By Your Name, in the mini-movie. The one-minute video, which dropped on Twitter, promised the first full-length album from the Old Town Road musician in Coming Soon, but did not give an exact date. The title track from his upcoming Montero album debut at number one on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 in April. The Flash original cast members Jesse L. Martin and Danielle Panabaker have closed new deals with series producer Warner Brothers Television to continue on the CW drama in its upcoming eighth season. The trio joins star Grant Gustin, whose current contract already goes through next season. The network has not indicated whether season eight will be The Flash's final chapter. Powerhouse Animation Studios behind Netflix Castlevania franchise and the upcoming Tomb Raider and Skull Island anime series is formalizing its relationship with the streamer by signing a first look deal to produce more animated film series. Under the pact, Powerhouse Animation will continue to work with Netflix on the new Castlevania series set in the same universe as the original, which recently wrapped its fourth and final season. Based on the classic Konami video game, Castlevania was the streamer's first original anime series. Netflix is changing the animation industry and Powerhouse Animation is proud to be a part of that change. And that is it from our newsroom. We will be right back after a quick short break. Stay tuned to find out more. Welcome back. In this segment, we will review Aquaman. Half human, half Atlantean, and Arthur is born with the ability to communicate with marine creatures. Directed by James Wan, the movie grossed $1.148 billion on box office. To review the movie, we are joined by Andy Bungie, who is a film journalist. Andy, welcome to the show. So nice to be with you again. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. So, Andy, what are the first impressions when you look at Aquaman? Can we say that it convinces one to dive into the world of Aquaman to explore more? Well, apparently they're going to make a new one for release in mm -hmm. December 22, and it was immensely popular at the time. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious as to why. I mean, there are different schools of thought. You and I were talking earlier, and you felt that the yes. tropes are a little bit well-worn with DC Comics. Mm -hmm. And yet, the, the purists that the comic con and everything Mm -hmm. need to be attended to, don't they, when you make a movie like this? And also the huge budget uh, mm -hmm. to get the special effects right. So mm -hmm. it, some people, I guess, would say it's a bit of a mixed vector. I loved it partly because I was living on the river at the time mm -hmm. and, and a, on a very small scale, some of the mm -hmm. battles that they endured were, were mine too. And I wonder if there isn't a bit of a metaphor in there, perhaps, of the, the game of life and mm -hmm. you know, the dark and the deep and the surface and the surface sort of screwing itself up, as is claimed in the film, uh, by the characters. Mm -hmm. So, it, but the way it res registers. Right. So, Andy, comparing it to Wonder Woman, Aquaman seems to uh, mark a move in the right direction for the Justice League slash DC Extended Universe. What do you think of that? Well, I sort of think so. I've grown, because I, I never read this stuff as a kid, these DC uh -huh. comics, but I because I it, it might sound a bit pretentious, I really think there's a, a link or an attempted link in the American mind Mm -hmm. with the whole union mythology thing, or right, L-I-T-E, so that you can actually grasp onto the fact that stories like pantomimes, like fairy mm -hmm. tales, have multiple layers of meaning that kind of stay with you as you grow older and think, oh, yeah, that's a little bit like mm -hmm. that. And you can, at least it's relatable, mm -hmm. even though it's relatable because, in fact, it's in such an other sphere. Mm -hmm. Right. So and I think, yeah, on that tilt, yes. Uh -huh. And uh, with a heavy cast like Jason Momoa, Nicole Kidman, Amber Heard, uh, William mm -hmm. Dafoe, do you think that it was more, it seemed like more of a star studded movie than story focused? Well, I thought to myself, the way the cast is arranged, um, mm -hmm. you know, that you get this mixture of people who are in the mainstream, not mm -hmm. particularly well known. And I, I don't want to sound ungallant, but sort mm -hmm. of old stages. Well, I must mm -hmm. say, Nicole Kidman looks particularly bitchy uh -huh. in, in this movie. I'll say no more than that. Um, but it, it's the, I think it's this that mixture of wisdom and that um, 
paying it forward that we were talking about something that last time that's mm -hmm. quite resonant here that makes the whole thing cohere in all its you might say outlandishness yes and talking about the cgi it's mind-blowing of course reminds you a bit of avatar but it's remarkable however do you think that there was still more than cgi in aquaman there was still like more room for other things like you know um, character development story development and whatnot I hear what you're saying because uh, some people uh, say that you know it's more style than substance. As mm -hmm. So many of the effects on the 80s were. I mean, the Saw franchise, not my cup of tea, but where James mm -hmm. Wan started as a director, I think mm -hmm. has been uh, you know hailed as you know a, a great horror movie making in terms mm -hmm. of the technical accomplishments mm -hmm. and you know written, uh, you know, uh, the, the revulsion of it is caused by great technical skill. Uh, mm -hmm. So I I I I, sit, I have a, a vested interest to declare because mm -hmm. I was at a university that's since become a bit of a UK leader and wow. from where some of my uh, more illustrious students got hired for Industrial Wise and Magic by George Lucas who did mm -hmm. quite a lot of the climactic special effects on this project and th this is in the dream time where they were literally researching mm -hmm. possibilities where it took days to do a simple computer animation on a Mac but mm -hmm. they saw the process through and many of them love the ride and love the commitment to it mm -hmm. as a piece of narrative filmmaking in which it was grounded as I remember mm -hmm. and you know that the ethos of what they were doing right and a very interesting stance has come up with um, by some of the critics who say that it was a remarkable movie because Warner Brothers did not directly interfere in the making do you agree with this I, this is new to me, and I'm fascinated by mm -hmm. that because uh, there's so many stories, aren't there, of things, Heaven's Gate, that were being hacked mm -hmm. about at the behest of various uh, bureaucratic mandarins. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has to be said, uh, and this may be a controversial view, focus mm -hmm. groups, uh, where you know, the entire premise of a movie can be mm -hmm. turned on its head and have to be rewritten and uh, um, re-blocked uh, mm -hmm. because the audience isn't going to react to it on a commercial level. Mm -hmm. I, they, I suppose the old story is if you've got a good story, it will carry for miles and it will franchise. Right. So I, I think the narrative drive is there because uh -huh. the team behind it is experienced and, also, and committed. And it was also all of a piece. So, for example, the initial concept and the screenplay were co-written by partly mm -hmm. by the director and partly by one of the, the writing team. Right. And there are remarks like more style than substance. Aquaman is visibly wonderful, but presents too much that we have seen before, often in the form of lazy writing. Again, what is your take on that? I think it's a terrible, terrible risk. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I look, for example, I'm still ambivalent about Anthony Hopkins in the Transformers mm -hmm. series, because mm -hmm. the the creatures don't, to me, look more than uh, s uh, small children's cartoons, like Pokemon mm -hmm. or something. Now, you could say that you can have narrative investment in something like that, mm -hmm. and that it's very best to get something like Final Fantasy, mm -hmm. an extraordinary piece of CGI that's made mm -hmm. a movie franchise and to become a sort of interactive movie of its own, you know, really move things on. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's actually about how you invest as a team when mm -hmm. it comes down to it. And I feel this project, like Wonder Woman, does. Mm -hmm. The curious thing to me, is that, and this is, again, this challenges my sensibilities, is that a lot of this has come with James Wan's experience and expertise mm -hmm. from pretty extreme horror movies. But the skills uh, translate. I think he's going back to that sort of mm -hmm. uh, project in the near future as well, I hope, as mm -hmm. the Aquaman sequel. Right, and uh, to, according to some critics, uh, a supporting character like Amber Heard was not really required. And if she was there, her, her character did not add more power because it seemed very useless and you can say it was just there um, to add more glamour to the movie. Um, what is your take mm. on that? Well, there might be a slightly uh, sort of current newsworthy spin on that because Amber Heard, of course, was uh, embroiled with the uh, Johnny Depp case and mm -hmm. won against him in a case yeah. of alleged, and this is a terrible, terrible thing, were it to be the case, mm -hmm. uh, you know, cruelty and domestic violence. But some have observed, without wishing to get involved in that, that she gave as good as she got and perhaps was at times quite, uh, shall we say, challenging herself. Um, mm -hmm. So, it, well, well, without wishing to do celebrity gossip at all, mm -hmm. they, I, I think you may be dealing with a complex character and that mm -hmm. may have influenced uh, uh, both her performance and, her, and how she comes across the time and how certain people perceive that. 
it's it, you could also argue that it's the usual dissing of strong women as we were saying last time right and uh andy on a scale from one to ten how would you rate the movie I'd give it about 8.5 because I think it's a humongously mm -hmm. uh, well-intentioned collective uh -huh. effort that really invests in something which, as you had said, it could potentially be very tired mm -hmm. and I think still runs that risk unless there's that 100% commitment. Mm -hmm. Right. Andy, it was great uh, discussing this movie with you. Thank you very much indeed. Real pleasure. Have a great day. See you next Thank time. Thank you. That was Andy Bungie reviewing the movie Aquaman. And that is it from today's episode. We hope you liked it. Don't forget to share your feedback on the social media link mentioned down below. We'll see you next week. Until then, take care and goodbye.